Hello, my name is John Heinz and I'm a cloud security architect with Cisco Systems. In this StealthWatch Cloud video, we're going to show you how you can use StealthWatch Cloud to better monitor remote workers. So we'll start by logging into our dashboard. Once logged in, go to settings, then subnets to make sure that your subnets that your remote users are using are identified correctly. You can see here we have 172.16.1.0 slash 24 defined. And then you can set the sensitivity of the subnets. We recommend right now using a high sensitivity, which basically means that all available StealthWatch Cloud alerts will be able to fire for that subnet. If you want to tune down it, you can make it uh, medium or low. And if you want a no alert, set it to none. The new device alerts here is used to get a notice every time a new IP address shows up in that subnet. So uh, probably would not be recommended for this type of application. So start with defining the subnets. If you want to see more about what those users are doing on your network, you go to session traffic, which is our way of being able to see full data inside the StealthWatch Cloud portal. And so here I would type in 172.16.1.0 slash 24. And if I leave all this blank, I'll see any conversation that network had on my um, in my portal for this time period. And so if I scroll down, you'll see there's 5,800 flows that are that match that category or what I selected. If I want to see, say, just DNS traffic or port 53, I could go up here and I could put connected port of 53. So the target port will be 53, hit update, and it's now going to requery for just that. So here I can see if they're using the right DNS server, for example. If I wanted to see what this traffic looked like over time, I could hit traffic chart. This is going to plot out the traffic from that sub subnet over the day. And so I can see pretty quickly that it's just during the three o'clock hour that this particular subnet had some activity. Connections graph will actually show the number of machines that that subnet, in this case, it's just one host talked to. So I can click on the one. I see it's 1.1. And I can see here it's 1.210, which was the DNS server it was using. So those are simple ways to see more detail about the traffic in your network. If you wanted to get more granular, for example, you could say, show me everything but 53 by putting a minus in there. It works for anything, like it works in a connected IP address or a port or limit to certain protocols. And you hit the update button and you can, again, you'll re-plot all that data out for just um, the new settings. And so as you can imagine, we're seeing a lot more traffic that's not DNS than different hosts it's talking to. If you want to see more details about the host, you click the down arrow next to the actual IP address and go to device. This is going to show you a 30-day timeline of the traffic statistics for this device. You'll have summary data. So in this case, we see that the first day it actually had traffic was on 319. And so if I select that day, which I just did, and I scroll down, I'll be able to see the type of traffic and the type of profiles of traffic for that day. Internal connections, external connections, et cetera. If I want to see just uh, a traffic graph that day and not just some of the summary data, you can click on traffic. And it'll now plot out that traffic over a 24-hour period. So you can see exactly when this thing came online. And I can also see all the different hosts it talked to and how much traffic went to them. In this case, we had no external host, but we could also, we would see those here as well. Another thing we recommend doing is to set up trip wires or segmentation rules for your network. Do that here by going to the settings icon, then going to alerts. Go to configure watch lists. And the last tab here is called internal connection watch list. You can see there, here there's already a rule defined called remote users underscore database subnet. And so we set up a source subnet. We left protocol empty, so any protocol would be valid. And we basically set any source port, any destination port for this destination IP address range. So any traffic going between these two networks would now be tagged as interesting. It would create an alert. And you can set up as many, as many of these as you like on your network. If you want to say the traffic is allowed, like for example, some ports are okay and some ports aren't okay, simply scroll down and make sure that this box is checked for the ones that are allowed. It's kind of like how an access control list where it says that these are okay, but if not, one of these things and everything else is not permitted. 
When the system finds traffic that has a match, it'll create an internal connection watch list alert. You can see one right here. If I click on the alert, it'll then have more details about the traffic that was detected. And if I scroll down to the observation, this is the forbidden communication that was, that was seen. And so here we see the matching rule. We see the source IP, destination IP, and the packets in and packets out. That's a few ways to see more details about users in Stealth Watch Cloud. Thanks for watching the video today. If you'd like to see more Stealth Watch videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.